Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supply. So today we're going to look at this 40 year old compound bow and I want to talk about what's different with archery today and what this bow was like 40 years ago. So first off, a customer came to my shop and said, here Stephen, here's a bow which is really old, would you like it? And I said, sure, I'll do a review on it. Now I actually don't know what brand this bow is. There's no, there's no markings on the limbs. It says down here, made in Canada, but there's no branding on the bow at all. But it reminds me very much of the old Jennings bows from back, back in the 1980s, which I used to own back when I used to shoot. So I thought, let's take a look at this and let's do a review and see how compound bows have progressed. So the first thing you're gonna notice about the compound bow, this is a cast riser. Back in the olden days, back in the 80s, all the bows were cast risers, which means they're poured into a mold and they come out with this. These days, only the cheaper compound bows have cast risers. So the first machine riser bow I can think of was a York and it was called a CNC. There might be another one before it, that's the first one I can remember, and I actually owned one. Uh, from York Archery, which went broke, I think that was about 1984, the first of the machine risers came out. So back in the old days, the grips were very much like a recurve of the way they kind of sat. Now you'll see they're parallel like this and very thin, you'll see this is quite a fat grip here. And they used to put these rubber things around the handles. Now the the concept of the rubber around the handle was when your hands get sweaty or if it's cold, the rubber will basically take away that moisture and stop your hands sweating. You can see here there's no attachment. I think back in the olden days we used to put a bit of tape on the front of this to hold it in place. Some people um, back in the old bear days when we had bear archery, and you're going to say bear still exists, well it's a bit different today. They used to have a grip which used to connect on and you used to be able to get grips which detached and changed the angles. And back Hoyt, back in the old days in the 1980s, they had low grips, high grips and medium grips. And you just clipped them in and it changed the position, very much like the recurves. But this is a very traditional grip. Now you'll see the position of the grip, it, it kind of makes your hand go in the position where it's meant to be. It's comfortable, it's wider than a normal grip, but it's kind of, it feels good to hold on to so that's the first thing and what they used to do back in the old days we didn't have film dipping back in the old days and all the bows used to come out either black or like this this is a marble green paint um, so this is pretty standard stabilize a hole there and back in the old days I was watching a film yesterday on people shooting back in 1985 the Australian Horsham classic and there was Katie Smith um, who was like world champion and Becky Pearson and, and these two were shooting out indoors at 18 meters and they were like 10, 10, 10. They had an old bow like this they were shooting with just a front stabilizer and they were just hitting 10 after 10 after 10. So you don't need the fancy bows that, that exist today. It's just so much easier with the fancy bows that exist today. So there's no cutaway riser. You'll see today a lot of the bows have cutaways. And now the reason for this was, well, they hadn't thought of it back then. So the bows were very much like the recurves, but also you used to shoot fingers back in the old days. And basically it was a basic ARS like this, a stick on ARS and you shoot off the riser like a recurve. And a lot of people would shoot bare bows. So you just look down the arrow and shoot. You'll see that here there's no flexible cable slide. So no slide here on the cable guard. And look at the thickness of this cable guard. It's so thin. Now as you pull this back, this is going to flex. So it's almost like the flexible cable guards that exist today out of carbon. But it's just because the rod is so thin. Which is interesting. Now back in the old days, there were three types of limbs. I'm going to hate to put you through the thing of way the limbs were made. This was a wood laminate limb. This was seen to be, you know, one of the top limbs. The cheap limb back in the old day was a fiberglass limb. And this was a more expensive limb. You can see the uh, multi-laminates here. Now what Martin did, Martin had three limbs. They had a fiberglass limb, a straight limb like this, and then a recurve wood limb. The recurve wood limb was seen to be their top of the line limb. Now, I'm only mentioning this because if you're an archer and you're thinking, what's the best bow? What's the best limb combination? What's the best cams? These questions have always been there and manufacturers have always said, well, the recurve limb's better than the straight limb or the wood's better than the fiberglass. You didn't really know why. They just said it. 
Now this was a very much a standard cam back in the old days. You had a one position here and another position here. This position here, when you swip your, swap your wheels around, you change from a 50% let off to a 30% let off. Now a lot of the top shooters used to shoot 30% let off to create more holding weight, which was more than common. Now on this side here, you could change the draw length. Each one of these was one inch in draw length. And you can see here the cable's actually touching on the cable, which means this string here is too long. Um, so the string would have stretched a little bit because the cable should not be touching the cable. Now the yoke system here, Martin actually changed this and they had four spots here. So you can change the position of the yoke. Each one of those spots adjusted by a quarter of an inch. So you can get your one inch adjustment here on the draw length and then quarter of an inch here on the yoke. Then Munn came up with an idea which said, well, we want to be able to time these cables. So they had micro adjustment here on the yoke. Now, if you want to adjust the timing on these, the only way to do it was to twist up the cables, which you really didn't want to do on a steel cable. Um, so that's basically how the bows were built. Dacron strings. Now you couldn't really fit a fast string to this because it'd pull the teardrops off. And back in the old days, the cables used to break right here and it could hurt, you know, hit you in the face. So they came out with um, fast flight systems which connected straight to the cams. So that was another change that existed. But people still shot pretty decent scores with these bows. And you're going to say, well, what's the difference today? And I'm going to say the difference today is an average shot back in the old days shot pretty average, where the top elite archers still shot pretty good. Now an average archer shoots very similar scores to the top elite archer. So the bows are so good it makes an average archer really, really good. Much easier to shoot now with the 90% load offs, so the high performance limbs. Now you see these limbs, this is a 70 pound bow which winds down to 55. You'll see these limbs are almost dead straight. There's very little pressure on these limbs, which is why even though this is a 40, 40 year old bow with original cables and original limbs, there's not much pre-tension on these limbs. Where today we use fiberglass limbs and we pull those limbs down and put heaps of pressure on them to create more tension on the strings. Now, look at that. This is a 70 pound bow and look at this. You can't do that with a, <laughs> with a modern bow. Look at these cables, oh God. And look at that. that, that's how loose that is there. It's, um, okay. Anyway, we're going to shoot this just the, just the way it is. Um, you'll see if it falls apart on me. I should probably tighten that screw up, right? But... Okay, so first... <laughs> so the first thing I want to do is describe the draw cycle of this bow. So start off with it's going to be slack to start off with now to get a really fast bow they start off really heavy at the start so they build up instantly and the way they do that is they put lots of tension on the limbs so as i pull this bow back it starts off light it's building up building up and now it's dropping and you really can't feel the valley with this bow it's kind of really nothing that builds up and it's really nothing right I say nothing, it doesn't, there's no valley, it doesn't, it just bleh. And when you get to the back here, where you're aiming, you know, like where do you anchor? It's, you don't, with the modern compound bow, you pull back and it's dead. It's like it's dead draw stop, you cannot vary that spot. So what that means is more consistency of a modern bow compared to an old bow. Now what I want to do is I want to shoot this through a chronograph. I've got a chronograph there, I've got the same arrow as I shoot. Now this is longer than 29, which is where I normally sh test all my bows. The arrows I'm shooting are gold tip um, velocities. Um, these are 400s with a 90 grain point. I think it's 324 grains. This bow should be set at 60 pounds. It doesn't feel like it, but it's a 70 pound bow and I've wound it down two turns. Um, but let's have a shot. I'm not expecting big speeds out of this. Now what I recall from shooting compound back in the 1980s was compound was very similar to a recurve as far as scores. There wasn't much in it. The compounds shot a bit better, but not like today where the compounds are just so much easier to shoot than recurve. I mean, a good recurve shooter still shoots an excellent score, but there's very few really good recurve shooters. So let's see what speed we get through. 193 feet per second 193 feet per second so let's just put this in perspective 193 so the fast compounds that we're testing today are about 
310 feet per second on you know, the 29 inch draw 60 pound with these arrows. The recurve that I tested at 40 pounds, I think shot about this speed. So this is shooting at about the same sort of speed as a recurve. 192 feet per second. And you'll see the twang at the end. Now the twang's got through this. Look at the vibration of that string. It's like, woo. Uh, now back in the old days, because you've got so much of the twang like a guitar, we used to fit silences to these strings to quieten them down and we'd fit stuff here. We had cable clips to try and hold these cables together to try and reduce the vibration of this. Now today with the string stops, the extra tension they put on the strings, it, it eliminates a lot of this vibration. So the bows today are so much quieter and so much faster, so much, so, so, so much easier to adjust draw length. Um, the draw length adjustment today is, is outstanding. They are so, like performance, there's so much performance in even a cheap compound bow. And people say to me, well, you shoot pretty good with a cheap compound bow compared to a thousand dollar bow. And I say, absolutely you do. The cheap compound bows are actually extremely good. You know, the thousand dollar compound is absolutely better, but you know, compared to this, and like I said at the start of this video, there's people who used to shoot these bows and shoot extremely well with them. Now, I wouldn't want to shoot this type of bow today. Um, like, <laughs> but there's people who collect them, you know, for old time sakes, this would keep on shooting. But I figure if you're going to shoot this, you might as well shoot a recurve. Now the other thing I want to mention is about finger shooting. So back in the 1980s when this bow was big and compound bows, everyone used to shoot fingers. And they used to shoot fingers and just look down the arrow like I did then and guess where the arrow was going to land. Then out came the compound bows, the modern compound bows. They reduced the axle axle size. You can see this is probably a 44 inch bow, um, axle axle, where today the bows are 31 inch axle axle with 90% let offs. So if you're holding a 60 pound bow, you're actually holding six pounds back here with your fingers. Which means if you twitch your fingers to the side or you let go badly with the shot, that string's gonna jump straight off the cams. The cams are big, the cams are thin. These cams are chunky. That's small. The chances of derailing a bow like this with a 44 inch axle axle with a low let off. I mean, you never used to see derails with bows like this. With bows that we've got like today, with the short axle axle, with the high let off, if you're gonna shoot with fingers, you risk derailing the bow. Um, and you're gonna have, I always have people come to my shop and say, oh, I've shot compound for years, never had a problem. And when I brought the new one, I derailed it. Well, it's, it's, it's completely different. This is like a recurve bow to shoot. Back in the old days, we didn't have any derails. They didn't really exist. It's only when they made the bow shorter, higher performance, high let off, made the cams thinner to improve the performance, improve the speed, that things became magnified. Talking, if you talk the riser, it magnifies the issue because the bow's short, axle axle, everything's magnified. You can shoot amazing scores with new bows, but release aids and getting the correct grip, not talking the bow is a must. So whenever, any, whenever anyone says to me, look, I've been shooting for 20 years, I've never had a problem with it, and they were shooting a bow like this, I'm like, you're just not gonna have a problem with a bow like this. So if you wanna shoot fingers, shoot bare bow, you know, looking at an old compound bow, even if it is 192 feet per second, which is extremely slow, is not a bad option. Now you could shoot lighter arrows with this. So you know when they recommend spine of arrows, a lot of it's dependent on speed of the bow, not the actual weight of the bow. So even though these 400 spined arrows are for a 60 pound bow and this is a 60 pound bow, I am sure with 500 spined arrows, this bow would be fine. Maybe even 600 spined arrows, this bow would be fine because this bow is so slow. So, and that would just be a trial and error thing to test that out. But with modern bows, which are shooting 300 feet per second, it's very different than an old bow which shoots 192 feet per second. So I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. I hope that's given you a quick overview of the old compound bows that existed. Now the other bows that existed back in the 1980s were six wheelers and four wheelers where they're, they're hooked on here and they are very, very different. So if I get a chance, I'll review one of those later. Um, but this is pretty cool. I don't know what it is. Um, someone suggested it's an Allen, but I don't know. 
and there's still the do not dry fire sticker there so and i reckon this bow would probably be okay with a dry fire but you do snap these things off eventually if you dry fire them but they're pretty bulletproof just because there's not a lot of energy in these bows but that's an old bow versus a new bow and i'm not going to do a testing thing of shooting this <laughs> because i'll just embarrass myself um but it's not a it's what i was like in the 1980s thank you for watching bye